The following media content will be part of a three-part series, The Zombie Drug, the Enforcer Drug More Deadlier Than Fentanyl. This video ebook series touches on one of the dangerous drugs to date, which is known under a handful of aliases. In this publication, the most preferred name for this killer opioid is Nutazines, and these opioids were essentially painkillers medical facilities tested to see if it could be used as a painkiller. They soon found out how potent and dangerous Nutazines are, and how would be users of illegal drugs are now dying due to the fact that drugs such as fentanyl was mixed with this killer drug. There will be a deeper focus presented within this ebook presentation, and the goal will be to come away with a better understanding about the dangers of this harmful narcotic. This is an ebook playback publication. The sectioned areas within this presentation will be the focus of the topic matters shown in the table list. You can pause the video to overlook them if you like. And now on to the main content. Fentanyl is 50 times stronger than heroin, and ISO is quite a bit stronger than fentanyl. Now there's nitazines that's possibly stronger than heroin and fentanyl combined. Yet, you have users of this new drug who expect to live long enough to get their next fix. And how in the double H hockey sticks, is that working out for them? Introduction. It's a drug with the most obnoxious name one could imagine. An ideal name for a sci-fi concoction, that turns an average ordinary individual into a mindless wanderer staggering around without a clue. Now what type of drug has the capability to alter the mind, that can reconstitute the mannerisms of an individual so easily? Well, there's a drug, that goes under a number of aliases, but the most noted is opioid nutazines. It's a volatile substance unknown to many, and yet, it has already negatively gripped millions of people living in cities, states, and countries. Here's a short list. San Francisco, New York, Philadelphia, Los Angeles, Tennessee, city regions within the state, UK, Britain. Now, who even knows what other regions are getting hit with the arrival of this dangerous drug? The various symptoms a drug can manifest within an individual is shocking to say the least. It's important to keep in mind that these potent drugs not only can perversely affect the body internally from within, they can also drastically change an individual's external appearance, meaning the outer appearance will be altered more and more over time due to the use of whatever drug of choice, thus degrading their appearance to a slight zombie-like state. There's quite a bit to cover in this epic entry so let's dive in. Chapter 1. The Zombie Drug Emerges. Silly how that header title sounds right. And yet, there have been numerous deaths already so far. Although the first reported death occurred in Britain in May 2023, that was stated by British news syndicate sites in the United Kingdom. Although, it's important to note that the drug has been declared a grave threat by government officials out in Washington DC. But, first things first, and this is in terms of how to approach this topic will be starting back from where it was first reported, which was the island nation Great Britain. And boy, oh boy, there have been a lot of manifesting issues popping up left and right in that country. As of now, there is an incline of nitazines users, which is on a steady rise. Nitazines are getting spread around quickly. Initially discovered in the UK in April 2021, nitazines were identified in a substance resembling white powder recovered from the back of a taxi in Wakefield, England, as stated in a Sky News post. Subsequently, these substances have been detected in the following illicit drugs. Heroin, cannabis, cocaine, crack, fentanyl, and the list goes on for any other harmful uncontrolled substances. Fentanyl quickly earned the title as the most dangerous drug ever to grace the black market. But now comes a new kid on the block, and in this is the even more deadlier successor drug to its predecessor. The drug was later identified as nutazines, and along with that confirmation, came the example of what this drug can do to its user. And the best case example centered around a young lady who was an avid drug user. She is a user who was on a deadly mission, and that mission was walking around with her cup in hand, trying to build up enough change to put toward her next hit. So, she's essentially begging passerbyers who are on the move, to get a who knows where. Although, that's of no concern to the young lady, because her only worry is how she will score that next hit. Which leads to the obvious question, where will she get her next hit from? Who will supply this young lady with the next hit? More than likely, she's probably going to see her pusher, which is the basic way most users get their fix. However, on a larger scale these illegal drugs have mainly derived from the black market. Now, most people probably don't surf the dot .onion browser. The Tor Onion browser supports websites on the dark web, and anyone who surfs this particular browser surely knows about an infamous site called Silk Road. It was a popular black market where just anything can be sold online. The site harbored a host of various items ranging from drugs, to illicit trafficking services, to hitman hiring services, and just about anything else illegal one could possibly think of. However, the site was shut down back in 2013. The same went for the Silk Road to site in 2014, which was not too long after its predecessor site went down the prior year. However, there are many other sites present on the dark web, as well as some on the clear web that sells the same thing. And the heaviest regions hit early on were in North America and Europe back in 2019 into 2020. The surge in overdose deaths is being fueled by the presence of designer drugs that are sold illegally on the black market. A concerning development that has not received enough attention is the arrival of nutazines. This is troubling, because it is likely to lead to a higher spike of overdose fatalities. And it's the hardcore addicts who are reeling from the effects of this deadly substance. The zombie drug may be the drug's handle name, there are others, and it's taking people out of the picture permanently at an alarming rate. 
and it's here where one may wonder, who in the bloody double H hockey sticks would unleash something that could take an individual out if they dared sample a single dose. Now that's the question of the century, if anyone were to ask, and the answer to that will be a shocking one to deliver like a throne retrievable frisbee rushing back to deliver a booming response. There's no doubt an enormous money trail can be traced back to many avenues when it comes to the black market, via the drug alias section. As before, the drug is commonly referred to as netazines, and it also can be identified as synthetic opioid netazines. It's a very powerful drug that has been mixed with fentanyl and other drugs, which greatly increases its potency. Chapter 2. Zombie Drugs. Dosage and Effects. This is the area of interest for many people. It's their insatiable curiosity to know what effects netazines have on the body. They want to know what types of medications are used to conceive it. One of the key drugs that it is composed of is fentanyl. Fentanyl itself is used as a painkiller to numb the pain and relax the muscles. This applies to individuals who have had painful surgery done to them, or if they are feeling pain and discomfort as a result from an accident, etc. And then it's up to the doctor whether or not to administer it to their patient. As for the dosage level, for fentanyl it will depend on the individual's weight and medical history. And of course, the doctor will have to ask their patient or patients about any specific medical conditions they may be dealing with. That will also help them to determine whether or not they should be given the dosage. That's if they are able to receive it. Healthcare providers must monitor their patients closely. After they have been given a dose of fentanyl, they need to check for any possible complications. With that said about the proper usage of fentanyl is one thing, however, it's the total complete opposite in regards to nitazines. There are no medicinal purposes for nitazines. Nitazines are very powerful synthetic opioids. Recently, they have been linked to fatal overdoses in several states. They lack approval from the Food and Drug Administration, and are not intended for legitimate medical purposes. Basically, anything stronger than fentanyl should not be used for medicinal purpose or purposes of any kind. Drug offenders who sell nitazines to their customers might as well hand them a death certificate along with their purchase. So essentially, they are granting themselves a one-way ticket to the county morgue. Hate to make it sound quite dramatic and dismal there, but that is the level of seriousness one must realize. If they are thinking about sampling this drug, it's against the law to sell prescription medications without a valid prescription or proper license. Lesser drugs such as heroin is 100 times less potent than this particular synthetic opioid drug. Fentanyl is even 40 times less effective than this drug, which is why the enormous level of concern about this monstrous concoction has been ramped up. Nitazines are too potent and a ridiculously powerful drug to be taken internally, and the sheer level of damage the drug can do internally, via externally is beyond horrific and inconceivable in sheer thought. People need to be starkly aware about the dangers of nitazine usage. What symptoms can manifest from use of nitazines? At the beginning of this publication, there was a short story about a young lady who is a drug user of nitazines. This was a story posted over on the NDTV.com website. There was also additional info on social media as well as other forms of alternative media. One in particular was FirstPost.com, which gave a bit of insight of the drug's drastic effects on the body. This subgroup of opioids have been linked to overdose deaths in several states. To state again, these are drugs that lack legitimate medicinal use, and have not been approved for medical purposes. Here's a list of the experiences they have when using nitazines, opiate-based, feelings of warmth, relaxed state, users become detached from reality, decreased levels of anxiety, the adverse effects after using nitazines, opiate-based, dizziness, possibility, nausea, possibility, vomiting, possibility, high potency, increased risk of overdose, euphoria, possible short-term effects, drowsiness euphoria, possible short-term effects, Clumsiness euphoria, possible short-term effects, pain relief, stress reduction, fever, sweating, slowed breathing and heart rate. It's important to note that information about skin issues or a zombie-like state of consciousness as netazine symptoms may ensign at slight characteristics, although, further study of the individual's mannerisms will need to be fully confirmed. So to be clear, this is not like the 1996 video game Resident Evil. This is referenced alongside the later produced movie in 2002, and that was where the pharmaceutical company Umbrella used a combination of dangerous experimental drugs and chemicals, creating the progenitor virus aka T virus that led to creation of mindless zombies and horrific creatures. So given the scope of time, as more information is gathered, it may lead to more conclusive details about the drug's potent effects on the user's cognitive health. Possible causes for the skin-eating characteristics, inflammatory issues, linked to nitazines. It's understood that there is still not enough information to explain how the usage of nitazines can cause skin-eating disorders. And yes, that sounds out of this world, as if that would be seen in a sci-fi flick. Nevertheless, this is an actual issue resulting from nitazine usage. So, to gain a slight perspective of how that could be would be to look at how smoking slowly, but surely changes the body from within. Now there's one key aspect linked to smoking, and that is inflammation. The area of interest is any spike of inflammation within the lungs as well as other parts of the respiratory system. This is why people may wind up having issues with acid flux, which is commonly where there's stomach acid moving upward into your throat. As a result, that may lead to further issues such as intense heartburn. And that's not to mention that fiery liquid-like burning sensation you may feel at the base of your throat. 
and then suddenly, you're in need of some ice cold water to help put out the flames. That can lead to irritation of the airways, and potentially lead to various respiratory issues or worse, chronic acid reflux such as GERD. Now, that's one idea centering around inflammation, that generates heat, and within the body. But, there's another idea, that comes to mind, a more irritating issue linked to inflammation, and this comes in the form of dermatitis. Notice in this image the very red dry chi flaky skin, areas of this person's hands and right foot. That looks pretty bad, as if that's a case of chronic dermatitis. And it's nothing more bothersome than lead's chronic dermatitis. That right there is the prime definition known as inflammation of the skin, and it can be quite uncomfortable. That goes especially for people dealing with issues such as eczema. Okay, we got to ideal skin fire starter types of conditions, now let's use them to form a basic hypothesis to why taking nitazines may bring about a crazy flesh eating disorder. Acute inflammation leading to a possible skin eating disorder? Alright, before laying this out, understand that this is just a hypothetical guess, to give a slight insight as to why nitazines uses such as that young lady who started experiencing a flesh eating adverse effect. Okay, in the story about her, she was trying to get up enough cash, to score her next fix, and she had to get it fast, because she was experiencing excruciating pain in her legs. She eventually tells a reporter at Sky News that she was using nitazines, and her habit kept increasing, and she also mentioned, that she now has holes in her legs. She also mentions how painful it feels. Now let's step back, and think about the irritation, the discomfort, that burning sensation of the skin. So, could it be that taking that drug, turns up the heat levels to extreme heights? That definitely seems to be the case, and if the skin on her legs is missing, then what are the chances there are also holes in her stomach, you know, like burning ulcers? Because when or, if she's able to eat something, and if it's hot, it's gonna hurt really bad. So, she needs more, and more, and more of that drug just to remotely function. Yeah, that's a one-way ticket to a dance with death right there. Now, that's just an hypothesis, but it could in fact be extreme levels of inflammation, that gets revved up, until there's no way to dial it back. And thus, the cellular composition of the skin, slowly gets eaten away. Um, that's quite an interesting perspective. But, what do you think? If anyone has an idea regarding nitazines, then feel free to leave a comment below, and it will get answered. We're at the end of part 1 of this ebook series, please make sure to like, share, and subscribe to the channel and click the notification bell. Part 2 of the zombie drug, the enforcer drug more deadlier than fentanyl will be airing very soon. Thank you for watching, and thank you for your viewership.